Hey everybody, Trey here. Welcome back to another video. Today's topic is going to be a bit of a different one than normal, but I was just casually looking at some weather data last night and saw a super interesting phenomenon ongoing in California's Central Valley. There has been a layer of dense fog that has settled into the Central Valley for three straight weeks. That's over 20 straight days of foggy conditions in California's Central Valley. From above the fog, it looks quite beautiful, as you can see in these images here. But it has caused some pretty hazardous travel conditions and just overall gloomy conditions for, again, three straight weeks in the Central Valley. Imagine waking up and seeing this view for over 20 straight days. That's pretty depressing overall. And while it's not unprecedented to see long stretches of fog like this in the Central Valley of California, it is certainly quite rare to have a fog event last as long as this one has. So I thought it would be a cool idea to do a video breaking down the meteorology behind this persistent fog and show you some reasons why this kind of fog forms and why it's been so persistent in this particular case. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. So for those of you who are not familiar, the Central Valley of California stretches basically from Redding all the way down to the Bakersfield area, including Sacramento, Stockton, and Fresno, and is, as its name suggests, a long valley. It's an area of much lower elevation, basically near sea level, that is sandwiched in between two mountain ranges, the Sierra Nevadas to the east and the California Coast Ranges to the west. And the Central Valley actually plays a pretty big role in the weather for this particular region. It can actually have some impact on severe weather scenarios. It can actually allow the winds to become funneled in through the mountain passes that are closer to the coast and funnel those winds out of the southeast, which are more backed, which are better for some tornadic supercells. And this is often considered a tornado alley type area within California because of this sort of backing, forced backing of the winds out of the southeast. But like any valley, it's not uncommon to see banks of low clouds or even foggy conditions in the Central Valley of California. It's just quite unusual to see it last for three straight weeks like it has in this particular case. Here is a loop of visible satellite imagery from the NASA Worldview page going back to November 22nd, which was about when this fog episode began. You can see the Central Valley here is this kind of lighter green area, and you can see that the fog has already kind of started to fill in in southern portions of the Central Valley on the 22nd, which is about 23, 24 days ago as of the release of this video on December 15th. So this expanse of white right here is your fog bank, again, starting off just occupying the southern portions of the valley. And initially, the fog was fairly limited in its scope, but in the subsequent days, it quickly filled in to cover the entire valley. Look at all of that white right there. That's the entire expanse of the central valley covered in this dense fog. And it is so stubborn that it continues to plague the valley up to present day. This specific phenomenon is called Thule fog. It's named for the Thule grass that used to line the shores of Tulare Lake, which no longer exists in the Central Valley, but used to be the largest freshwater lake in the western U.S. Thule fog typically occurs in the Central Valley from late fall to early spring, so the November through March time frame. And it's the leading cause of weather-related accidents in California. And as we've said before, Thule fog is fairly common in the winter months in the Central Valley. But to get one that lasts this long is somewhat rare. And research has shown that there was a 46% decline in winter fog days from 1981 to 2014, as shown in Baldacci and Waller 2014. I'll put a link to this paper in the description box below. So this particular Thule fog event has been pretty unusual. Thule fog is a special type of radiation fog. The processes that create radiation fog occur at night, and conditions are typically optimal after a period of heavy rainfall. You also need clear skies and calm winds. At night, Earth's surface radiates energy back out into space. And when skies are clear and there's no cloud cover to trap this energy near the surface, that heat is just lost to outer space. As a result, the air near and at the surface cools. After a period of heavy rainfall, there's a lot of moisture 
at the ground. Dew points are higher, and that near surface air mass just has a lot more moisture in it, so it doesn't take as much for temperatures to cool down to the dew point. As heat continues to be lost to outer space, the temperature cools to the dew point, and as this happens, the air becomes saturated, water vapor condenses, and fog develops at the surface. And as we said, having calm winds is critical in the persistence of radiation fog so that the fog can settle into the given area. If winds are strong, the air is going to be moving and mixing constantly, which prohibits that from happening. So if you've ever woken up on the morning after a rainy day and it's been foggy outside, you've likely experienced radiation fog. But you know it usually quickly burns off. It doesn't last for three plus weeks straight like this Thule fog episode has. So the question is, why has this Thule fog episode been so persistent? Well, the stage was set by a very wet autumn, especially early November, across parts of the western U.S., as evidenced by the map on the left. All of the areas in green are areas that experienced above average precipitation for the month of November 2025. And you can see that the entire Central Valley has experienced above average precipitation for the month of November, with central and southern portions of the valley experiencing precipitation in the top 10% of analogs going back to 1895. So this very wet autumn has allowed the ground and soils across the entirety of the Central Valley to be quite moist and saturated, and surface temperatures to be quite cool. We've also had an incredibly stagnant and persistent mid and upper level pattern. We've had this large ridge of high pressure just sitting out in the Pacific off the California coast for quite some time now. You can see the clockwise rotation in the wind barbs here across the western half of the U.S. and the upward kink in the geopotential height contours, which are these black solid lines you see here. That is that ridge just sitting over the Pacific and creeping into the western U.S. And again, this has been quite persistent for some time now. This is the upper air map from yesterday evening. And we'll go back in time here to early December. And you can see that ridge has been very persistent over the same areas for the entirety of this stretch of fog. Even here, when we've had a little bit of, of movement in the ridge, we've still been on kind of the eastern periphery of this ridge out in northern California. Ridges of high pressure are associated with subsidence or sinking motion, and sinking motion is associated with warming air. So this persistent ridge of high pressure has created a very warm air mass atop the shallow cool air mass that is settled in the Central Valley. And this warm air mass has been record warm for many locations. This is a map of mean daily temperature anomaly for the 15-day period between November 20th and December 4th. So as this Thule fog episode was really starting to persist. And you can see the outline of the Central Valley there where the fog has been quite persistent, temperatures running well below average. But some of these locations surrounding the valley in the Sierra Nevadas, just above the fog layer and out to the west as well, these are running three, four, five degrees above average for that 15 day stretch. And we've seen many of these locations just above the fog layer report record high temperatures for many of these days in this Thule fog episode. So when you have this shallow, cool, saturated layer near the surface and a broad, record warm air mass above that, that's going to create a very stout temperature inversion where the temperature actually increases with height. In order for air to rise and create any type of unsettled weather and to get rid of this fog, we need temperatures to decrease with height, but in this case, with that cooler air near the surface and much warmer air just above that, air is not able to rise, and instead all of this cool, moist air is trapped underneath this stout inversion. And when I say stout, I truly mean it. This is a series of ACARS observations from aircraft entering or leaving Sacramento International Airport over the past 10 days or so, going back to December 4th. Many aircraft are outfitted with weather instrumentation, and therefore they can take measurements of weather data as they are ascending from or descending into certain airports. And in the absence of observed soundings, we have these ACARS aircraft soundings that can give us a great look into the low and mid-level environments at these locations. So of course, Sacramento International Airport right at the heart of this Thule fog episode. And we're going to focus on the skew T portion of the soundings here. 
The red profile is the atmospheric temperature profile as measured by the aircraft, and the blue profile is our atmospheric dew point profile or moisture profile as measured by the aircraft. This is the ACARS observation at Sacramento International Airport from just before 22Z, so about mid-afternoon yesterday, December 14th. You can see that the temperature is 40 degrees Fahrenheit at the surface, which equals the dew point. This is indicative of a fog situation. But notice that the layer in which the temperature equals the dew point is very shallow. It does not extend very far off the surface at all, maybe a quarter kilometer at most. So this layer of cool, stable, moist air that's creating this fog layer, this Thule fog in the Central Valley, is quite shallow. But it's rooted beneath this extremely stout temperature inversion. Notice how the temperature profile juts extremely hard to the right. And we see a very extreme and rapid increase in temperature over a fairly shallow distance, going from about here, which is about a quarter kilometer off the ground, to about a kilometer off the surface. So in about three quarters of a kilometer, we are changing temperature rapidly. This is the inversion layer, acting as kind of a lid on the atmosphere. Air cannot pass through and rise through this extremely stout inversion. And to show you just how stout this is, we're going here at the base of the inversion from a temperature of about 3 degrees Celsius or so. If we were to extrapolate down toward the axis, it's about 3 degrees Celsius or so to a temperature of about 16 or 17 degrees Celsius or so. So on a conservative level, we'll say it's about 13 degrees Celsius of temperature change in about three quarters of a kilometer. If we were to actually calculate this out, this would give us a lapse rate or the change in temperature with height of 17 degrees Celsius per kilometer. Now, lapse rates in meteorology are assumed to be a temperature decrease with height. So even though lapse rates are typically not written as negative numbers, you can think of it as a negative number because you're decreasing a certain number of degrees per kilometer. So when you have a temperature increase with height, that is actually written as a negative lapse rate. So actually our lapse rate here would be a negative 17 degrees Celsius per kilometer. Just for some context, an atmosphere is considered unstable when the lapse rate is in excess of six degrees Celsius per kilometer. So we're seeing lapse rates almost three times that value. And instead of decreasing, the temperature is increasing this much 17 degrees Celsius it, for every kilometer you go up in the atmosphere. That is just an insane lapse rate. So if you were at the surface, you were experiencing temperatures of about 40 degrees. And if you were to go up about 1,500 to 2,000 feet, so not very far at all, you would be experiencing temperatures in the upper 60s to low 70s. So about a 30 degree temperature change in just about 1,500 to 2,000 feet. That is ridiculous. And again, this incredibly stout inversion has been incredibly persistent thanks to that incredibly persistent ridge of high pressure aloft. This is yesterday's ACAR sounding at Sacramento, and we'll go back one afternoon at a time until we reach December 4th to show you how persistent this inversion has been. The soundings are pretty much identical day after day with that mega inversion atop that cool, shallow, stable layer near the surface. That cool air has really nowhere to go. It's trapped underneath that lid of the inversion until the ridge breaks down. Now, is there an end in sight for this Thule fog episode? The answer is yes, and it's going to come sooner rather than later. Here is this morning's run of the GFS model at 500 millibars, so where we look for those troughs and ridges. You can see the ridge still in place as initialized this morning out in the eastern Pacific, given the clockwise flow of the winds around this center of high pressure. But the ridge is getting suppressed by this trough to its north. So you can see the downward kink in the geopotential height contours, the solid black lines there. This is a trough that is working to suppress the amplitude of the ridge. This trough is going to move into the Pacific Northwest over the next couple of days, shunting that ridge to the south. And ahead of this trough is some rising motion that's going to take aim at the Pacific Northwest and Northern California, allowing the fog to lift. Now, accompanying this trough is going to be an atmospheric river. So we're going to see some pretty heavy rainfall once again across the Pacific Northwest into Northern California. This is a progression of precipitable water anomalies. So basically, how much above or below average is the total moisture content in the atmosphere? The blues and greens are significantly above average precipitable water values, and you can see that stream of moisture going into the Pacific Northwest. This is going to slowly shift south over the next couple of days as that trough moves toward the Pacific Northwest, 
and it's going to start overspreading California, Northern California in particular, by Tuesday morning into the afternoon. And that's going to allow a more tropical air mass to start becoming entrenched across the region, including the Central Valley. It's going to get rid of that cool, stable air at the surface, and it's going to negate that temperature inversion that's keeping that fog entrenched across the Central Valley. So come Tuesday into Wednesday, we're going to see quite a change in the pattern that's going to allow this Thule fog episode to finally come to an end after over three weeks of doom and gloom. So that's going to wrap things up for this video. I know this was quite a different topic than what we usually discuss here on the channel, but I thought it was quite interesting and worthy of a video. All in all, the heavy rainfall has saturated the soils across the Central Valley this fall, and a pervasive, persistent, record warm air mass, thanks to the persistent ridge of high pressure over the eastern Pacific, has caused this stagnant, stout temperature inversion that has just not been able to lift over the past few weeks, and has kept that fog in place over the Central Valley for such an extended time period. So with that, thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.